I want to show you all the book that I'm reading and why and uh, the, the way that it's opened my eyes. Um, you'll forgive the tacky, tacky cover. This is a very important book that hasn't been given as much exposure as it should. In fact, it's been actively suppressed. That You can see that the title that it's been given is Prostitutes uh, Embedded in the Pay of the CIA. The original title uh, was Bought Journalists uh, or Journalists for Hire. And um, it's called the reprise. This printing is called the is called a reprise because the original printing was uh, um, stifled. It was uh, it was seen to it by the powers that shouldn't be uh, that uh, it not receive uh, wide readership. This book is written by this man uh, who's no longer with us, Udo Ulfkata. He was. Uh, a writer, a journalist, uh, ensconced in the German mainstream media. And so he wrote for several, uh, I believe, major journals, uh, major newspapers, beginning all the way back in the 80s, uh, but, but going on for several decades. And this book is essentially a confession uh, not only is it a confession on uh, about on his part, but it's also uh, his his exposure of his colleagues. Um, and the situation is uh, again, if if uh, if its claims are to believe to be believed, that the German uh, media was essentially uh, sold had essentially sold itself out completely to the CIA, to uh, American intelligence, to American interests generally. Um, and this, this, this went from, you know, uh, everything uh, from cre uh, creating stories essentially from scratch, just at the behest of some intelligence source, some intelligence source says, we want this story to get out there because it's good for our uh, uh our interests, and they say yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, or Yavol, uh, <laughs> uh, Herr American. Um, and, it, and it just was the, the case over and over and over and over again. And one gets the impression from this book that, in fact, the American occupation of Germany, which uh, so supposedly ended a few years after World War II, in fact, never truly ended, that uh, it continues to this day. So it's it's a very interesting book. It's a very eye-opening book. It's one that I recommend. It's one that if we lived in a world that, that had integrity, uh, uh, you know, where the authorities had integrity, where the academy had integrity, where, where um, the the... Uh, institutions generally the the, uh, the 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 institutions of our culture had uh, integrity if that were the case they would assign this book in uh, journalism school and would be journalists would read it to see what not to be uh, don't become a paid shill <laughs> is what it basically is the lesson that's basically taught although the author as I said he, he confesses this is, a conf this is a confession from the profession. He confesses that he did it for years and years and years on end. Um, but what this brings into sharper focus for me is the mystery of the Nord Stream pipeline, which I don't think is mysterious at all who did it. I, I think it's pretty clear that the United States, uh, some branch of the United States, uh, uh, or uh, specifically the CIA, was involved. Seymour Hersh uh, exposed this, um, and Seymour Hersh, I think, is an eminently uh, trustworthy source. Of course, the 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 general media of the you know the general mainstream media in the United States. Which which one suspects is just as 
intellectually and morally bankrupt as uh, as the one in Germany. Um, uh, just as in bed with the authorities, just, you know, the mockingbird media, as, as it's sometimes called. Uh, they, they didn't, they seemed especially incurious about this Nord, the Nord Stream story. This, this pipeline that, uh, the Russians built, uh, and the, the purpose of it was that, so that, uh, fuel could be shipped, uh, to, specifically to Germany, um, and uh to uh western europe generally uh that pipeline was destroyed and this was a, a, uh essentially was an attack on the infrastructure an attack on the citizenry uh, an attack on the well-being uh of germany now it was done to try to hurt russia of course because Russia had built the pipeline and Russia was, Russia stood to gain financially from the pipeline's existence. But what it also did was make, make it so that fuel would be much more expensive, uh, and, uh, much harder to obtain, uh, for Germany. So the, the Russians built the pipeline, you know, in conjunction with, German authorities, and then the, the Americans go and uh, specifically the CIA goes and knocks it <laughs> knocks it down, destroys it, uh, sees to it that it doesn't exist anymore, and the Germans say nothing. They don't say a thing. They don't say, "Excuse me, you just hurt us. Uh, you just attacked us. You that that was." Uh, that was an attack on our infrastructure. That that was fuel that we needed to uh, heat our homes, fuel we needed to cook our meals, uh, fuel we needed needed to uh, to run our our cars with uh, to put it into the tank of our cars. Uh, this that that's an act of war, but but it somehow went completely unremarked by the mainstream media uh, of both. The United States and Germany. Now, of course, there were there were and are people uh, in in Germany and in Europe generally who aren't down with all of this uh, and who who did protest this and who are protesting the use uh, uh, the usage uh, by NATO of Ukraine as a proxy war uh, against uh, you know uh, as a as an excuse. To uh, to fight Russia um, um, on the uh, on the behalf of uh, again American interests uh, in the, or the said to be American interests uh, you know American elite interests American interests as defined by the the uh, the elites uh, of of Amer who who rule America not by, uh, as defined by the citizens of America who really have no say. They have no say over foreign policy at all. Um, but it, it helps, this book helps to, to put that all uh, in, uh, in perspective and it helps to make sense of why it happened, why it was allowed to happen, why things like that are allowed to happen. Um, it seems that Germany in particular is still a vassal state uh, is still an occupied nation. And it's weird to have to, to see all of this happening in conjunction with the United States uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Western powers in general getting in bed with uh, um, Nazi organizations in Ukraine. It's weird to see that these two things taking place at once. The domination the total domination of Germany, the the you know the the dictation uh, to Germany that that uh, you, you need to serve our interests and and uh, the uh, the absolutely appalling circumstance of the the German media being having sold out uh, hook line and sinker to uh, the State Department to the CIA to NATO to uh, Western or see Amer American elite interests uh, to ha have that happening 
uh, you know, so that that would suggest that uh, you know the 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 time of Nazi Germany is long gone, or the time of Nazism is long gone, because it was the the Nazi regime that was in power that got deposed when the American occupation took over, and yet at the same time we see the American occupation uh, powers getting in bed with uh, uh, with Ukraine organizations like uh, Azov Battalion, Right Sector, and so forth. So uh, uh, you know, it, it seems seems like a like a paradox there. And yet, uh, the, the deep state is Ukraine, and Ukraine is the deep state, as I've written uh, on my Substack page. And uh, this, as I said, kind of puts it all in perspective, kind of makes it all uh, more understandable, uh, and I recommend it highly. Thanks for watching.